tonight. New angry opposition to one of the president's nominees for a top, top spot at the DOJ. Former NAACP lawyer Debo Adigbale could soon head up the Justice Department's powerful Civil Rights Division. But it was his work defending this convicted cop killer that has the fraternal order of police, among others, wondering whether he is the best man for the job, to put it mildly. The police are coming out expressing their vehement opposition to this, their anger, their incredulity that the president would pick this man's defender to head up the Civil Rights Division. Trace Gallagher in our West Coast newsroom with more on the killing that still resonates three decades later. Trace? Megan, it was nearly 4 o'clock in the morning on December 9th of 1981 when Philadelphia police officer Daniel Faulkner pulled over a Volkswagen Beetle being driven by a man named William Cook. He was the brother of Mumia Abu-Jamal. While Officer Faulkner and Cook were on the side of the street talking about the traffic stop, Cook struck Faulkner in the face. While Officer Faulkner was trying to subdue Cook, a witness testified that Mumia Abu-Jamal ran across the street with a gun. Witnesses heard shots fired. No one saw the shots, but Faulkner had been hit in the back and returned fire, hitting Abu Jamal in the shoulder. Another witness then saw Abu Jamal standing over the body of Officer Faulkner, who had been shot five times, including once in the face from 12 inches away. When police arrived, Abu Jamal was wounded, sitting on a curb at a hospital. A Philadelphia police officer and a hospital security guard heard Abu Jamal say, quoting here, I shot the mother effer and I hope he dies. His trial lasted two weeks. A jury of 10 white people and two blacks deliberated six hours before finding him guilty. The next day, the very same jury deliberated one hour, 53 minutes before returning a death sentence. To this day, critics maintain that Abu Jamal, a former member of the Black Panther Party, was framed by a police department known for racism and brutality. Abu Jamal is no longer on death row because the Third Circuit Court of Appeals vacated his death sentence two years ago, but his request to get a new trial has twice been rejected by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court and once by the U.S. Supreme Court. Megan. Trace, thank you. While the National Fraternal Order of Police are writing President Obama directly over his decision to nominate a man who defended that killer, they are far from alone in their opposition. Joining me now, Maureen Faulkner, whose husband Daniel, the police officer, was so brutally murdered by Mr. Abu Jamal. And Jay Christian Adams, an attorney, a columnist for PJ Media, and a former DOJ Civil Rights Division attorney himself. Thank you both so much for being here. Maureen, your reaction when you heard that this attorney uh, had been nominated to such a position by the president. Megan, I was absolutely outraged by President Obama to make this decision um, to have a man who defended a, a murderer, who, someone who murdered a police officer with premeditation and malice, um, is a radical um, he was a Black Panther, and to give him an appointment to nominate him to the Department of Justice, I mean, it's a disgrace. Why did not he not come to some other outlet, the National Fraternal Order of Police or other outlets, and say, let's do background work on him? Mm -hmm. Well, let's say, I mean, the, I think the administration likely the knew about his background, but clearly was okay with it. Uh, I mean, the, the National Fraternal Order of Police came out today and said, this is outrageous, and we, we are going to oppose this to the very end. But I want to ask you, because, Maureen, he, he testified today. He stepped in. He wasn't there in the guilt or innocence phase, uh, this lawyer, who's now been nominated. But he was there to try to fight the death sentence. And he says the reason he did that is because the jury that tried this killer was made up, that race played an improper role in selecting the jury, and he thought you can't have that in any case, and you certainly can't have that in a death penalty case. He testified about it today. Let's hear in part what he said. Work at, at when I was a lawyer, and this is when I was at LDF. The work involved a legal issue relating to jury issues. It was about the legal process, and it was years after the uh, conviction um, had been entered by the lower court. It was on an issue of whether or not the jury had properly been instructed. And ultimately, several federal courts found that the jury had not been properly instructed, and there was, in fact, a constitutional violation. It was on that basis that 
the death sentence was thrown out and Mr. Abu Jamal was resentenced to life without parole. Your thoughts, Maureen? Megan, back then there was no uh, documentation regarding the jury being properly instructed regarding mitigating and aggravating circumstances. So he does not know what he's talking about, which so many people do not in this case. Uh, and, and this is what has gone on for the past 32 years. Our family, friends, and I have to endure this murder um, and the notoriety of him driving in my car out here in California and listening to commentaries that he still does to this day. Chris, your thoughts on uh, this, this nomination, because you know that attorneys do defend bad guys, even convicted criminals, especially ones who don't believe in the death penalty. Well, that's right. But don't forget, Megan, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund chose to get involved in this because Abu uh, Mumia Jamal is a celebrity. The shooter. He is a celebrity on the left. The murderer, is, strangely enough, among groups on the left is, is a celebrity. Why? So the, so because he, he's perceived as a symptom of America's uh, oppression of, of, of people in Philadelphia who, who look this way. So this is a guy who on the left has been a hero and to get within a hundred feet of this cop killer to defend him by choice disqualifies you from a position in the Justice Department in my view. But it's, this isn't the, the only thing he's done. He has uh, worked on a range of radical issues involving race such as attacking employment background checks, saying they're racially discriminatory, going after school discipline and trying to keep people out of law school like Abigail Fisher at the University of Texas simply because she is white. This is a man who has a so radical back to affirmative record. action for minorities at that, at that university, a case that went up to the U.S. Supreme Court. Go ahead. And, and he was heavily involved in that. This is a man with a radical racial background, and that's exactly why this president nominated him. Maureen, he came out today in his testimony and did extend sympathies uh, to the family, saying this was a tragic loss of Officer Faulkner, tremendous loss to lose it, and my sympathy goes to his family. Your thoughts on that? My thoughts are he could have... Uh, when he was being interviewed by the Ethic Committee and asked if there was any conflict of interest, he should have talk, talked about this case at that time. Now that he is nominated, he's saying that. And it's a disgrace. I feel police officers throughout this country are, are out there to protect the public, and they should be respected. And by President Obama nominating him is like spitting on all our officers and our federal agents throughout America. Mm. Maureen, thank you for being here. Thank you for your husband's service and your families as well. Chris, good to see you again. You too, Megan. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Wow. We're taking your thoughts on